My name is Mitch Moyes, and you're about to witness a special tribute to Juan Pablo Brandt, a special memorial service that was held in his honor. This part is being actually taped after the service because I failed at the time to, to thank some people that I really needed to thank. So if you'll please bear with me for a second. I first wanted to thank Monica Brandt. She flew all the way here from China. Um, she has 14 uh, sons and daughters, and so she's, she's pretty busy. But, but she's the one that, that felt like that it would be okay for us to do this memorial uh, tribute to Juan. We basically put this together in less than 24 hours from when we first got the okay from Monica to, to, to the conclusion of it uh, uh, during the night that we had the memorial service. And so without her help, uh, we wouldn't have had a memorial service. And so we appreciate her letting us have this moment to honor Juan. I also want to thank my mother and father, and especially my sister. When Juan came out here in the spring of 2003 uh, for a week uh, during his spring break, he got a chance to meet my folks and my sister and, and her three sons and, and other family members. And, and Juan became a project. And so over the course of, of years, we kept in contact. And when Juan came out here in the fall of 2009 to register and come to Weber State, uh, my, 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 my folks and family members welcomed him with open arms. Uh, just like many other people, we went out and got him some shoes and shirts and ties and, and um, coats and, and mittens and all those things that he'd need to have here. And so without their support, I don't know if, if, if I would have extended the offer to Juan to come out here and, and to be his friend and mentor. So to my folks, to my sister, to other members of our family, thank you very much. Finally, I want to thank Rachel Johnson, Josh Hunt, and Morgan Breezemaster for putting this video together so that we would have a lasting memory of Juan. And without their help and their expertise, this wouldn't have ever happened. So to them, I thank and I hope you'll enjoy the memorial service that was held to honor Juan Brand. Thank you. Hey, Juan, and Juan loved him. And while he was here, I took him over to Weber State. There was a lot of construction going on back then. But he had a chance to kind of see the layout of what was going on. And, and uh, sometimes I'd have something to do, and I'd drop him off at the library. And the library was Juan's second home. He always loved learning and studying, and, and he would spend a lot of time in the library and actually enjoy it. <clears throat> I, made a, I made a promise to him when he was visiting the university. I told him if you ever wanted to come back and go to school here, that I'd help him. In the spring of 2009, he called and asked if I remembered the promise that I made. <clears throat> and I said, yeah. He wondered if there might be a way that, that, that he could come out here perhaps and go to school. And so we started the arduous process of financial aid, uh, transcripts, um, admissions, registrations. It took a while, but he arrived out here uh, at the, at the end of September 2009, and he enrolled in January 2010, and basically took um, six semesters of college work straight without having any time off. <clears throat> he was a great individual, and he taught me a lot. He taught me 
the importance of, 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 of not being materialistic, of being minimalistic, of, of being grateful for, for just basic things. And he loved to hike, he loved the outdoors, um, and he, he made me a better person because of my having had, having had an association with him. At this time, I'd like to call upon uh, Jeffrey, Dr. Jeffrey Hurst, who is the Dean of Students at Weber State University, but he's also uh, one's um, bishop in, in the work that one's on. To, um, to speak today and appreciate all of you um, hanging out and uh, paying your respects to Juan and to Juan's family um, at, at this time. Um, just want to briefly um, talk about my association with Juan. Usually as a dean of students, I don't, I, um, students don't tend to want to meet with me and it's very understandable because it's not always under the best circumstances and and I can assure you that my meeting with Juan was under a very good circumstance in, in, in that the, the first time I met with him, it wasn't because Juan was in trouble, it was because we were concerned about him because there was some concern that he was being taken advantage of. And I'll describe that situation to you. Juan had um, befriended and brought a homeless person uh, home to the residence halls and had that person uh, living in his room sleeping in his bed while Juan slept on the floor and and Juan was actually paying for his food and, and, and buying food for this person. But honestly Juan didn't have a lot of money. He barely, he barely had enough for his own for his own sustenance and yet he was doing that for someone else. And I wanted to tell you that story because that is Juan. That was what that's who Juan was and that's what we can uh, learn from him. He was a person who was uh, compassionate, caring, kind, um, and he thought differently. I think I, I talked with uh, some members of the family today about how Juan thought differently. He really did. He didn't think uh, like like uh, in the conventional ways that many of us do. It didn't seem odd to Juan that you would bring a homeless person home to the to the college residence halls and have them sleep in your bed and eat your food and, and that kind of thing. In fact, I'll bet it would seem strange to him that people that more people wouldn't do that. And so that's the kind of compassionate, caring individual that he was. And and really the kind of person that I think and the kind of uh, attitude that I think we could really learn from and adopt more of that in our lives. He was always very philosophical about things. He was, as Mitch said, one of the most non-materialistic people that I've met and I value that and I, and I honor him for that. Um, he was, one of the person who was focused on principles and focused on character those those intangible things in life rather than on what a person had or how a person looked on those external superficial kind of things you really focus on that internal and again a reminder to me that maybe I could do more of that in my life and maybe we could all benefit from doing more of that in our lives um, he was such a kind person Juan would look at me at times when I would be trying to give him some of you know what I thought was wise counseling he would say Thank you, Dean Hurst. You're a wise man. He'd say it like that. So you're a wise man. Thank you very much. And I could tell that Juan was not thinking the same as I was. He was going to go and do what he wanted to do. So I was going to about telling me that I was a wise man. They did good. Um, but I, um, in these kind of situations, I always try to think, what can we learn from this? What can we gain from this? Each person leaves something behind. Um, that we can, that, that makes us different, that makes us, uh, uh, can make us who we are if we can integrate that into our lives. And I think Juan was a person of integrity. He had principles and values, and he lived to those principles and values, um, even when they weren't typical societal uh, principles and values. Um, and that's something we can really learn. And in fact, and I'll speak from um, a little more from my. Um, uh, my calling as a bishop, I was, as I thought about Juan, uh, something occurred to me, and I want to read you this from the Bible from Matthew. I was in hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. 
Then shall the righteous answer and say, Lord, when saw we thee an hunger and fed thee, thirst and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. For also simply said in Mosiah 2.17, I tell you these things that you may learn wisdom. You may learn that when you're in the service of your fellow beings, you're only in the service of your God. That sounds like Juan to me. That's what I remember him for, and that's what I appreciate about him, and that's what, when I think about what I can gain from him and my experience in, in um, knowing Juan and working with him, that's what I'd like to take into my life, and I pray that we can all do that. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> We appreciate some of you folks that are coming on the back. Thanks for coming. At this point, what we'd like to do is open up, uh, open things up for you to maybe share a comment or a thought uh, about one. And I'd like to um, ask uh, Detective Colby to, to lead this portion off. Um, not only is the, he the detective involved in, in, in the current uh, work that's being done right now to to find a uh, closure to what has happened, but he knew one, and I'd like him to start off. And then anybody who would like to say something, feel free to come up, and uh, we'll take a few minutes and uh, let everybody have a chance to say something. So, thanks. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm honored to be able to stand before you and talk about uh, Juan for a couple minutes. Um, uh, to celebrate the life of such a wonderful person, and like the word who have passed from the last two individuals, how giving and caring Juan was, I knew that from a, a personal standpoint and also a professional standpoint, having dealt with the incident that uh, Dr. Hirsch talked about where he brought a homeless man into his dorm. And, um, professionally, he was, he was such a great example to me and um, to the type of person that, that I strive to be and, and want to be. Um, Juan is one of those individuals that only comes around once in a lifetime. Um, someone who cares more about others than he does for himself. Uh, someone who is willing to give you a shirt off your back just if you, if you asked him, he would. And that was the type of person he was. The other type of person I knew, he was someone that wanted to try everything. He was always trying new things from rugby. And this was interesting. I, I found out a couple of uh, days ago that he got into fencing, and that, that was something I thought was interesting. But he, he was the type of person, he wanted to try new things and, and get out there and learn new things. Um, I, I really admire that about Juan. Um, it's been hard for me over the last several days. Uh, meeting with the family and talking to them. I, I now have a clear understanding of why I want the type of person he was. A very caring family, very caring mother and father who uh, loved him dearly and, and taught him the principles that, that he uh, used in his daily life. And, and the brothers who uh, helped raise him and um, teach him um, everyday things. And, I just want you to know that how special Juan was to me and how uh, I, I will continue to strive to be like him and do everything I can. Um, I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Juan mm -hmm. was one of those individuals that would catch your eye. <laughs> I remember the first time I met him, uh, they'd been interested in my, um, my roommate and they had for each other very much. He actually stole my bananas that day. <laughs> I remember first time going up to him saying, you just ate all my bananas. <laughs> and he's like, he just didn't know what he did wrong. He's just like, what? <laughs> you just ate my bananas without asking me. He's like, I'll get you some more. Ah. And I'm just like, huh. Ah. He was the most interesting individual I've ever met. And... 
He always asked me how I how I found it. How my life was going. Whenever I asked him, he'd be like, Oh, it doesn't matter. How are you? I miss him. And I wish I had gotten to know him better. And uh, he was, he was so inside, he had, he was just a teacher of salsa, and all he wanted to do after that was do the salsa. <laughs> he kept saying, hey Jackie, what if that's going to do salsa? Ron was a unique person that truly does when it comes to things in life. Ah, uh, man. Uh, you know the things I can say about Juan? Um, I do a lot. Uh, I remember one of my very first time I met uh, Juan. Um, he's really funny. I lived with him last year. We lived in the, uh, the dorms together just down the hall. And there was a bunch of us. And it was first day. Everyone just moved in. And uh, we were all down at the end of the hall talking and getting to know each other. And out of nowhere, Juan comes running down the hall and, uh, and tackles this kid into a big box of cardboard. And we all laughed. And it was really funny. And... We talked to Juan, we got to know each other, and then Juan walked off. And I, I assumed that Juan knew the kid that he tackled really well, because he's not just that strangers. But so I'm like, yeah, you guys get friends. And he's like, I have no idea who that is. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Juan was never afraid of making friends, even in very unconventional methods. But he was a, he was a great guy, really kind, and, and I liked him a lot. So I attended school for more um, this past year. I uh, recently moved back to Las Vegas. But um, before I moved back, Juan was the last person I saw before I moved. Um, he made a point. When I was at the grocery store, I was leaving, just getting snacks before I grew up. And he ran down the aisle that I was on to say goodbye. And he said, like, yeah, where are you going? I said, Juan, I'm moving back home. And he said, you are going to come and say goodbye to me? And I, I didn't know one very well, but it didn't occur to me that I needed to be able to say goodbye to every person I had met when we were state. So I said goodbye to him, I talked to him for like 30 minutes in the grocery store. And I was like, well, where are you going? He's like, oh, I'm going back home. And I was like, how did you get here? He's like, oh, I walked. And I said, no, I'll give you a ride home. And he said, no. And I said, well, no, really, I'm going to give you a ride home. And he goes, okay. So I drove him home, and he was the last person I saw before I moved home. And I don't think really, this is the next time I'm coming back. But one, but he's really special. He's really special guy. I'm glad that he chased me down and said bye before I got to leave. My name's Neil, and I also lived uh, with one last year in the in the dorms. And Juan was one of uh, one of my home teaching companions. So that's that's where we would get paired up and we'd go and we'd visit other people in the dorms to make sure they're doing all right. And we'd teach them a little lesson or you know just share a little message with them. And Juan would always give the deepest thoughts. He was really such a caring person. He cared for everyone that we would visit. He really enjoyed going around and, and visiting those people and making sure that they were happy. And I always just remember whenever and during the lesson I turned to Juan and, and asked him you know, what his thoughts were, if he would give some of the deepest and, and most thoughtful and, and caring message to, to those people and to make sure that they, that they felt uh, the spirit of, of Christ. And that's really what he tried to emulate, I think, in his life.
I don't know if I'm reaching these things or not, but um, I met one in October, right after 18, I think the end of September. Um, I'm going to be the client from the library, I'm on the faculty in the library, and for the last seven years have been uh, one of the co-chairs of the diversity conference that we have each year. And, uh, I may have met you then because he, uh, well, he was standing in line waiting to meet our keynote speaker who was Henry Susanos, the former secretary of housing under the Clinton administration. And I could see that he was really disappointed uh, in not having an opportunity to meet him and talk with him. And I was going to have to take him back to the airport. So I asked Lauren and a couple of friends, uh, a couple of people, other students that were there, if they want their company us. And his face just glowed. And he was, he almost got a little bit teary. You know, he just, oh, that would be so great, you know. And then he found you to let you know that he was going to be gone for a while. And, and, I didn't remember the name, but I, I remember the name, so I was in the year. Um, and all the way down to the airport, he was having this running conversation with Secretary Cisneros, uh, asking a lot of very intelligent questions, and I, I don't know if he ever kept in touch with him or not, but uh, Cisneros actually gave him a card that said, you know, get in touch with me if you want to, and he says we can continue some of our conversations. And then on the way back, he and I were talking and told me all about his big family, and that, um, you know, where he was from, and explained that he had just come here and said, this is such a beautiful place, you just feel like you want to be here. And, um, he, um, he told me all about his large family and told me about his parents who were doing missionary work in China. And I said, oh, really? What church? And he says, it doesn't matter. They're doing God's work. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, once he started the school, he was in the library all the time. And if you ask any of the reference librarians, they show all of them. Some of them say, this is kind of weird, kind of an odd duck. And I just looked at it as someone who is very, very intelligent and very curious. Because he, I was speaking with someone earlier who said, I think he would come up with these questions. And he had explained that it, it doesn't work that way, that you couldn't get that information. And his answer was, but that's what I want to know. <laughs> so I, I think people who saw him as weird or odd uh, was because he always had a spin on what information he was looking for. But you knew that he had thought about it really, really hard before he, he came to ask his question. And, I have to admit that a few times when he asked me some clothes, I had a to stop and think, well, where am I going to find that, you know? Um, or he, he stopped me and asked me about, you know, if, if I'm doing this, how would it be the best way to say it? And, you know, and he was always cheerful, and he, <coughs> even if he was just walking past and put a stop, he'd always nod and make sure he gave a smile and stuff, you know. And, uh, he had told me about his brother who had done modeling. And I said, well, could you consider doing something like that? And he said, no, well, not really. He said, I want to get an education and do what I can to help other people. And, uh, I told his mom that several people had commented on his face and what a beautiful face it was. But the thing was, 
what was more important was that when we got to know him, we found that his heart was that beautiful too. <laughs> my family and Thank you. 
recent roommate that before he passed. Um, and he came in and he knew he was very unique, you know. Um, and after I got to know him, he, uh, he'd always come into my room and ask if he had soda, he loved soda. I was going to say that he loved it. Always come in, can I have soda, you know, or can I have this, that, can I that, whatever it was, anything sweet, he loved it. And uh, I could tell that um, he wasn't eating away, right, you know, and I was very sad to see that. Um, just hurt me a little bit. So over Christmas break, uh, it was Christmas, um, I went to spend with my family, and uh, we had a lot of leftovers left, and I was like, he was the first person that came to my mind, because I knew he wasn't spending Christmas with anybody. I asked him before, you know, well, maybe you can come, you know, there's you just say, no, no, it's all right, no, I'm just going to stay here. So I said, all right. But I got, you know, I got leftovers for him, and that day, Christmas Day, I brought it back for him. And he's, he's like, you know, I, I had it in my hands and I came to like shake his hand. And he, just, he just came to me the biggest hug. Like, that's just the type of person he is. I went to shake his hand and gave me a hug. But I just, he's just a thankful guy that every, anything you did for him, he's like, <laughs> yeah. I just want to let you, he talked about his family all the time. And I just want to let you know he really loved you guys. I'm sorry I had to happen like this, but you know, I miss him too. Thank you guys. I'm Kylie Davis, and Juan was a really great guy. Um, I lived with him in the dogs, and I lived a couple doors out with him. And he'd always ask me to come and hang out with him in the middle of the night to watch movies, TV, go for a walk. Um, there was a couple nights that we actually walked his nest together. And I was feeding my groceries, and I was about to pay, and he was like, no, Kylie, I got it. He's like, I got it. And I'm like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, I got it. And I said, okay. And we went back to the dorms, and he asked me, he's like, Kylie, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I think I'm going to go to bed, and he's all, he's like, oh, okay, and I was like, do you want me to stay up with you? And he's like, yeah, I'll be watching a movie with me. And I said, yeah. We watched Phyllis, and he, he just, he, I, he, he looked at me, we were watching a movie, and he looked at me, and he's all, Kylie, he's going to go to Adam, and he's all, thanks for staying up with me, and say, thanks for always being here for me, you know, and he's all, you're a great girl, and, um, your friendship means the world to me, and I was like, no problem, Mom. You know, I'm here for you. And I also, before I got home for Christmas, um, I saw him and I said, hey, Mom, are you doing anything for Christmas? And he's like, no. And I'm like, are you going home? And he's like, no. And he's like, where are you from? And he's like, I'm from China. And I was like, I'm from China. And I was like, you know what? I, you know, I'm, I'm going home, and um, I have plenty of rooms. Um, if you can come and crash at my house for a couple of days until I go home, and he's like, no, I'll just stay here. And I'm like, are you sure, Mom? He said, like, yeah, but thanks for the offer. Mom was a really great guy. And he always helped people, and he was always there to comfort people. And I'm, I'm really going to miss him. And I'm so sorry that it had to be this way. And I'm so sorry that you lost your son. It's not easy. And if there's anything that I can do, please let me know. I remember I was serving as an admissions ambassador where we did student recruitment activities. And one of the first things I did as an ambassador was meet Juan. I remember I had just started, I was a freshman myself, and I went to a football game, and our advisor said, hey, will you go talk to that young man over there? I think he's by himself. I said, sure. So I went over there and talked to Juan. I still remember he was wearing some California soccer shirt. It was green. We started talking about soccer for a while. And I was impressed with Juan from the second I met him. And I think since I met him in that standing, every time I saw him, I noticed and we'd connect and talk. And that's been going on for about three years. But 
you know, as I think about Juan, I feel really bad I get to know him even more. And how and that's that when I said the prayer, I kept thinking about relationships and friendships. And how I think what I've learned from Juan is, is how important it is to cherish the people that you meet and the relationships that you have. And uh, Juan was really good at that. He was really good at that. And you would meet him, and I would always think, what are you thinking about, Juan? Because you could just tell he was on this deep. He just was thinking about everything. And uh, I don't know, I, I, I just appreciate him. And I, I wish I had more concrete things to tie our relationship to. But I think that when I look back, I just think he was... He was always positive and happy and doing something. And he was really productive at the times I met him. And I kind of on behalf of the students that we met, I just wanted to let the family know how much we love Juan. He touched a lot of lives and he met a lot of people in those three years. I don't know if there's a student who's gone through the universe who hasn't met, who has met more people than Juan has met in his life. Whether they be extensive relationships or, or small occurrences where we remember Juan and just smile when we think about it. And I just wanted to share that with you. I hope when you think back on your son's life and wonder how he was doing these last three or four years, think of good things because he was doing this. My name is Wes, and just like this young gentleman said, there's nothing in my mind that comes to happiness when I think of Juan. I was a climbing president, and last year we went all on a climbing trip, and Juan's not much for complaining. He had the biggest blister on his foot, but he did not complain once about it. So the whole weekend he climbed barefoot. He didn't want to put on shoes because it hurt so bad. Like, Juan, we have better shoes we can put on. And I said, no, no, don't worry about it, guys. So we walked literally at two miles barefoot to go climbing, because he didn't want to wear his shoes because it hurt too bad, but he didn't want to complain about the blister. It took about an hour and a half to walk this, we thought it was a cool city in the world because he had so much initiative and motivation and still get out there still climb even though his foot was hurt. The reason his foot was hurt because of the, the marathon that he ran by himself barefoot in his shoes without socks on. So he gave himself a blister for fun. Anyway, he's an outstanding guy. You're welcome. That's what you love him. Climbing club. They're all here with Ned and climbing. When you climb and feel that's what you love him. So, sorry for the guys lost and I'm very sad, but you guys love to be with it. Okay, my name's Claudia, I'm the Energy Middle System Pins. Um, one of my favorite things that I remember about my brother <clears throat> was that he never um, tried to act like he was so much older or wiser than me. Yeah, he would actually step down a little bit on um, trying to be as immature or childish as I was being. Um, yeah, we had this little joke. Um, he was in, just to show you how unique he was, um, uh, when we would go to the bathroom for pee. I was like, so many people here to say, must be people. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, I think we had awesome conversations. Um, she got very into um, her gender. I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's, uh, it's this theory that there's um, reptilian angels, uh, aliens, and um, I was zero that they're hiding. And uh, we were very into that. <laughs> very suspicious. <laughs> and also, I find to get a trip out there and go and cover everything and save the world. <laughs> um, and then, uh, on all that, um, on the other conversations we had with um, Pinsy Sarah, the um, spirits that we would talk to, we were very spiritual guy. I don't know if I find what it is, and um, a lot of us have. History of um, many things, whether they're imaginary or not, we just all have it. And uh, it was the funniest thing uh, just hearing him talk about the ones that he would talk to. He would introduce me to them and we'd stay up all night, you know, showing each other who we would talk to and stuff. And you know, that was a you know, religious thing, but. <laughs> 
And as you can maybe try to push that on me. Good. And the best things about him, you know, you try to force any opinions, yeah. You care a lot about people down to their weight and how healthy they were being. Um, you used to buy snacks at a little store, a little um, circle gun, other things, the normal flavor. And uh, you pass one to each person, and then you keep the whole bag for himself. Not because he was being selfish, but because he didn't want anyone to get fat. <laughs> <laughs> So, here's my partner, Amy Crown, and hopefully still with you. I love you, Jake. Um, I'm Brown. Ron wanted to be a film director, and he he would always stay with me after I went through my divorce, and he loved my son. He he loved his mother, and um, we would go for long walks. I couldn't keep up with him. He would always try to encourage me to exercise and um, do all the things that I wanted to do. And one of the things that we had in common was we both liked acting. And um, he would take me out for long walks and we would feed horses. We would pick apples and we would feed horses. Um, um, my son reminds me a lot of him because he has big eyebrows. Yeah. He, yeah. He was hard. A friend like him was hard to find. He was really, honestly, the only friend I really had. Mm -hmm. You couldn't keep him away from the trails. He, uh, there was one time we went to the Ogden River when the, the waters were high. And he, he asked me, he goes, I want to get in the water. And um, he asked me why I was scared of water. And I told him because I had a brother that passed away at the age of eight years old. And he looked at me and he goes, well, let's bring him back. And he goes, I'm three. And I said, no. He will receive me from that side. And one, two, three, he, he dove in. He always talked about um, calculated risks. And I knew one day, maybe. I, I worried about him because he loved outdoors. He, um, Like I said, he would take me for long walks, and I'm, I'm going to miss him. And I'm, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to see a lot of people here meet his mom. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm, I'm going to do my best to follow up my dream and remembrance to him. Yeah, because I knew he wanted to be a film director and I'll just stick with my acting and do the right thing and help people because that's what I knew he looked to do. He was a good result. So I don't know the first time I saw him. I know him by Grant. Um, but the first time I saw him was at Army PT, six o'clock in the morning. And he walked in with these bright yellow footy foot shoes, foot shoes, and um, 
who the army and they have maybe wear certain things and they're supposed to wear tennis shoes and they they were bright yellow and he was just had these long socks on and he was just ready to go. <laughs> and um, I remember somebody pulled me to the side and talked to him about it. He did not again, but he did love those shoes. But um, I remember several things like shepherd in the building and I saw him every now and then. He was, he was in the human building quite a lot. And um, I remember one day he came to the info desk and he asked if we had um, any clothes that we could give to Jerry. And um, I was standing in the back and I just remember the girl saying, no, we don't today, but you can come back. Um, but I know that he would check in every now and again to see if he could take co- clothes to Jerry. Um, He, he was a really amazing guy, he really was. Um, uh, we would always talk in the movie building. He, like, he would always ask me how he was doing. Um, one day he's like, like, are you still doing what you see? And he's like, no, not this semester. And he's like, why don't you bring out some time? And I'm like, yeah. And really, it really upsets me that we never had the chance to hang out. So now, I thought that I'm so much about him tonight. And um, he, he really was an amazing guy. And I, you know, I, 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 do, I do believe that he's in a better place. Say, I don't how can I say that? I'm here today in all of you. Because we had this, he never sat for a few years. He did send us, we would communicate and send messages, and he was a lot of other But his communication was completely online. I love him well. I understand why he didn't write. I just got it. He had so much in his life, so many things to say. Who can sit down and write so <laughs> So many stories, so many things. He was doing so many things. I can't believe it. This is, he, he, he left us to come here. And I think it was the best place he could go. And there's so much. And all of you. Taking care of him, but he, he he was with us in California last time. We took some family pictures because we had a family reunion, and the rest of our kids and all the three friends. But the rest was all there, and he was there too. And that's what was the last time we saw him. Uh, I'm so happy to hear all these stories because. I get to know my son. I didn't know him the way he is. And he was when he was here. It's not that I didn't see all those beautiful things. I did. But so many details of stories. And I thank you for Arish when he came here. It was really for Arish. And studying the things he wanted to study and experience everything he wanted to experience. We thank you. He did well. It was a big news for us that he was missing and then couldn't bless his head because he kept us online, but he was so twice in, in telling us and how to handle the whole thing. We were thinking of the peace and we were feeling like, is it what's happened? No, no, he, I, I would think, no, he's not calm. But God gave us such an amazing grace. And we always know, always knew, 
from it. You can see that he was, he was in heaven. And he was happy. And he was done with his mission here on earth. And you can see that he, he, he fulfilled his mission. He, he had love to help people. That's the only mission that he could have. And, and uh, that told me that he fulfilled his mission and he was ready for bigger jobs. And when we spoke to my husband, by the way, my husband would love to be here. He couldn't come. We have four more kids and he couldn't leave them alone and a lot of work doing there in China. A lot of commitment there, so he couldn't come. Uh, going to say. He wanted to tell a little story from JP in his early years. Uh, JP was where, where, like with all other kids would travel with us everywhere. We went to, we have been many seven countries around the world, uh, living in our uh, seven countries. Uh, our kids are born in seven different countries. Uh, where we He went through, from South America to Mexico to Russia to China. And little time in America, just a few years ago, he came back. He always speaks with us, but when he was 16 years old, he decided to leave and finish high school in, in, in the state. So he went uh, in China at that time. And he left and he had his life, he was living with our son, he did great in school, he was in honor roll after three months, he was in honor roll in school, the best student, he was like that. And he, he was, he was gone for 40 years. My daughter, by the way, JP is a twin brother, and she has a twin sister. The twins. So, we were very, very good with each other, very good friends very loving each other for a lot until the 16 years old that he left. So they had a real rough time, he was in a lot of things, real bad, he was kind of lost, and he studied, he went to college, he did well, but still inside his mind, he didn't know his, his way, and our kids have always, were always uh, with the Bible, and God, and seven others, and they did it for years. When they were small, if you see pictures, they, they make shows with us, and songs, and we will visit orphanage, and we did so many things. Anyway, so JP, all of those four years, and he was lost, and my daughter sent me a letter that he wrote when he came back to us in 2005. He came back to us after four years out, and when he came back, he was starving for love, starving for the word of God. So much that he came, he was so lost. And he told me his letter that he, when he came to us, he was so lost. He didn't know what, what to do with himself. He, he, he regret many things he had done. And because we we believe and we, we have Jesus in our life 24 hours a day, we told him, Jacob, you just need the word. So he started reading the word and he was so hungry. He would read and read. He would be desperate to read the word. He started memorizing scriptures again and everything. So his life turned to God again. And we had some hard times with him. And he, amazingly, the Lord showed us, the Lord told us that he had a mission because he was coming back to the Lord at a time after being four years kind of far away from God. And I think from that time, the Lord started working in his heart through the Word, and he started being the person he was supposed to be. And the Lord used him, and can see it. But now, I'm so happy to hear those, all these stories. We opened up a website, and uh, uh, my son, my other older son, is a website, professional website. So he made a very nice website about Jesus, um, and it was called Remembering. Uh, but, um, uh, if you, you must 
your email, you can send you the request. And you can check it out and see if you have more story. But what do you want? Is it income, please? Told your story. You have a place where people can put stories about you. If you really want it. I would like to recollect all those stories to all my family when I go back. So, this is JP. This was JP. <laughs> you know? And you're at peace with God. You know, JP is in a good place. It's in heaven. Thank you so much. Oh, one more thing. I want to really appreciate Say so much thankful for all of you and for putting us in a very, very common place to be. But here, feeling us and everything, we just taking such good care of us. We're so thankful. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming. I appreciate all those that came up and, and uh, made a verbal comment, and appreciate all those that, that made a, a comment in their, in their heart. Um, thanks to a person that I've never met in my life, named Josh, who had called me this afternoon. Um, he arranged for this to be taped, and so you can go on Facebook, you can go on rememberingwombrand.com. And so if you have any pictures or if you have anything that uh, would be uh, interesting for other people to be aware of, um, you know, please go to that website and you can find out about it. Um, if you came in on, on the side, you might have noticed a lot of uh, cashews. Please take a minute and wander over and uh, get a cup because there's quite a few of them over there. The cashews were, was Juan's favorite kind of like snack. Mm -hmm. And we love cashews. And so uh, we're going to make some cashews available uh, you know, tonight. Sometime in the spring or early summer, um, uh, we made an effort to, to try to maybe hike up to the area where one was found and, and, and spread some ashes. And so, again, if you're interested in maybe doing that, participating in that, stay connected to rememberingwarfriend.com. Check it maybe now and then. And that might be uh, something we might want to participate in. I think, I know, Juan would be so impressed how many people are here tonight. I'm impressed by how many people are here tonight. Um, he, uh, he lived here longer than any other place he had been in his life. And he talked about wanting to make this his home. He was up, the people were down to earth, the surroundings were beautiful, and he just loved to be outdoors and, and having it so close. So, for all of you who made his life and your lives here, thanks. In closing, there's a song that was Juan's favorite song, and the first time you read the words, First time you heard it, you read the words and you said, No, that's, that's exactly what I mean. And so the words are in the program. And at first time, he's a director here at the Home. He's going to play the channel. And I'm going to just come in. And then following that, um, there's going to be a taps play. Um, both uh, Juan's brother and sister, Claude is visiting from Oklahoma, where she's in the Army. Uh, Miguel uh, recently served in the Army. Uh, Juan had participated in ROTC while I was here. But having gone to all these other countries in the world, had, had a special love for America. And so, um, so we're going to just play taps. So after the song, we stay in the main seats, uh, listen to the taps. And then uh, please, if you haven't met, you know, the wonderful family, you know, please come up and, and, uh, and, and meet them and, and come over on the side. There's some things to look at and some uh, things to sign and more obsessions. <laughs> Thank you again for coming. <laughs>